So what, what's your take regarding the connection between innovation and sustainability? So I think a few things. I think uh, innovation is definitely the way we get out of this, or one of many ways that we get out of this. It's very hard to convince people that they need to consume less stuff than they already are consuming, that they need to stop driving everywhere and burning fossil fuels. And it's very, very challenging. But if you can offer alternatives that let people to continue to live similar lives and also live sustainably, then uh, you know, innovation really provides that path. I and mean, we're seeing a great deal of innovation uh, actually in Silicon Valley where you know, we have a lot of electric car companies springing up. A lot of the funding that used to go to internet startups is now going to bigger and bolder projects. The VCs getting involved in things like electric cars, alternative energy sources. Um, so it's a big boom business in California. And you know what? Whoever solves this problem is going to be the richest person in the world. So there's a big... It's not as if uh, there aren't, you know, capitalistic motivations for people in Silicon Valley to solve this problem because it's the biggest problem the world faces and whoever solves it will be providing a bigger solution than, than Bill Gates did or Steve Jobs did with, with innovations in the computer industry. It's a huge opportunity and I think a lot of entrepreneurs are really excited about innovating our way out. Mm. Uh, and Luciano, you have a, a very important work at Instituto Criar. Uh, in which you actually teach the basic skills for people to use audiovisual tools in order to participate in the market or in civil engagement. Do you think the fact that social media is a two-way uh, communication pattern, do you think that is important? How, how do you improve the skills of people to actually engage in civic life and discuss the issues we are discussing here? Yeah, I think tradition in Brazil, it was always the rich filming the poor people. So what we are trying to do there is to give another point of view of the same history. So we are working hard in the, in the unemployed for the youth, so to get people know uh, something, a profession, uh, what do you call profession? Uh, profession. Profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And more than that, to give like the periferia mm -hmm. uh, here their own point of view about their history. And I think it's, it's working because we've been doing it for the last 10 years and uh, the families that we are working for, with, they came, the kids, they came from family with renda uh, per capita in, in incomes, mm -hmm. like $150 a month. And now all the students that uh, have been working with us, 80% of in the formal uh, professional market uh, with incomes around 500 bucks. So, uh, uh, we are we are trying to to give their the tools to have their own point of view, and uh, we changed the name of the institute five years ago. It was only uh, cinema and television, and now it's cinema, television, and new media's, and it's working really well with the kids to broadcast, like streaming and everything. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's working. That sounds great. Uh, and actually, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, the idea of peripheries, of peripheries. And I, I think... Peripheries. The, the peripheries. Yeah, well, let's yeah. use peripheries because there is no perfect <laughs> translation, but okay. I think it's easier to, to understand that. But that's I'm feeling also like an Indian talking in English here. <laughs> okay, I think away, but they don't... Okay. But come on, it's... Both are good words. Uh, it's good. it's interesting, but th this connects also to innovation in the sense that uh, formerly uh, innovation used to come mostly from the center, and now there is all this discussion about open innovation and innovation coming from the peripheries. So, what's your take on that? Uh, well, Pete? so I think we need to find innovation. We need to find ideas. I think people have this this concept about ideas that you know someone smart sits in a room and suddenly goes you know I have a great idea and it suddenly comes comes around. I think the way ideas really work is by combining two things that already exist. Right. That's where all new, there are no new ideas. They're just combinations of things that already exist. Mm -hmm. You know, people from different backgrounds coming together and finding solutions, or you know, a solution coming from a completely different industry or different part of the world. So. The more people interact and the more people are empowered to share their problems and share their solutions, then the more innovative the world will be. So all this social media is speeding up innovation dramatically because you have more ideas colliding every day. It might seem like, you know, it's a very small thing to update, you know, Twitter or something. But, you know, if that combines with someone else's ideas, uh, then it's really powerful. So I think that's always been 
uh, the seat of innovation is, is ideas combining. And the more people who have a voice, the more ideas and the more innovation we'll have. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So we have only two more minutes. And I would like to ask uh, one final question, which is, what is the most important challenge that you believe we will have in the next 10 years? It's a futurology question, I know. But I think it's interesting to see what's uh, your per perception about what's to come. So what do you think? One minute. So clearly, I mean, the biggest issue uh, that we're seeing in technology is energy, mm -hmm. right? How do we, you know, how do we stop burning fossil fuels? And, you know, then the usage is going up exponentially. And how do we find alternative sources um, that are sustainable? And that's just a huge challenge. It's going to be a challenge throughout our lifetimes. Um, and it, it really needs solving now. So that's, that's obviously the biggest challenge. Luciano. For me, I have, it's hard to, to think global. I think what I do in life, the TV show I go, everybody opens the door for me to get inside the houses all over Brazil. And I think the goal for me and for Brazil for the next 10 years, and if you can have all the population living in decent homes, with decent food, with decent school, with distant uh, hospitals and healthcare. So, uh, as I told here before, I, have, I think we have lots of homework to do here in Brazil. Uh, uh, and the good things that we can uh, make Brazil a better country to live for everyone uh, with sustainable issues inside these education programs and everything. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Please help me thank uh, our invitees uh, for this great talk. Thank you. Muito obrigado.